Alright, it's right where we left it. So clearly the wife didn't do any engine build while I was at work. I guess that's okay. I don't blame her. <laughs> but I think the uh, right thing to do is to grab do stuff in the manual that we kind of skipped over real quick just because we didn't feel like doing it the, the night before. So get these coils on, get their the gap correct for this these uh, pickups. Magnets, well, technically the coil's the pickup, and these are the, who, I don't care. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get those on, we'll get the intake on, have this stuff kind of ready to go. We got our part, oh, that's on the bike, let me go grab that. So here's, this is that part that I cracked and ruined, and our, our guy at work, it's, ca it's old and it's cast, and that stuff's not easy, right? But he was able to get stuff on here and it's stuck, so I'm not worried about it blowing back open, um, when it's driving the, the mower. But from the heat, you can kind of see it crunch together this way uh, when it cooled, which doesn't allow it, you know, there's quite a bit. It needs to get over those two lips. So we're going to goof with this a little and try to get it to pop over that and then bolt it down. Um, we'll also grab the, the bolts for the shaft and double check that these are still spaced properly so that we can thread it together. I, I hope it's repaired well enough. It, I mean, looks good to me, right? We just need to modify it a little. Okay, grab these. So these are all shaft bolts. The shorter ones are for the rear, whatever. I took this out to the shaft itself and verified that these four all thread in together. So they're still they're spaced correctly. The biggest thing I was worried about was when I cracked this, it came apart. So what he did is he put these edges in the vise and squeezed that together um, the way I asked him to. Dude's fucking awesome. And then, you know, the, just the heat that was in it, it made this angle in, which is, which is okay. We can, it's aluminum, we can probably push it out. And then by it being that tight, when we go ahead and tighten it down with, the, with these bolts, which oh, I saw them yesterday, upper heat shields. Uh, I don't know why we kept that out. But yeah, I have these two bolts for these here. So what we'll probably do is grind a little bit of a taper here so that these have, they can start on there. And then when I tighten them down, it should naturally splay the thing out. It'll fit nice and tight, should be fine. Uh, it'll be perfectly centered, which is nice. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll be happy with that. It saves me 15 bucks and shipping. <laughs> I like how the other night I was all worried about my air compressor being loud, and I just totally went over on the bench grinder and put a nice angle on these sides. So that angle fits over, right? So it's starting to go on. And I think, um, yeah, we'll get the bolts in place and just pull this down, and it's going to pop into position. We'll we'll use a, you probably use the box, and we'll get that in film. So here's, they have a whole chart of just uh, fastener recommendations for stuff that's not specifically listed in the manual, like this little flange. So right here, an M8, 8.8, and it says 8.8 on the on those bolts, uh, 216 inch pounds, which this guy doesn't even go to, I don't think, technically. But you can see the 8.8 .8 on the end of the bolt. Um, the 216, it goes to 200. I mean, it's one of those things where if, if I'm over doing the fastener, right, what I want to see is that it, it pulls itself on, it stretches out a little bit back to kind of its original shape um, without overworking that fastener. So we're just going to set it to 200, they said 216, yeah, close enough, right? We might have to get the pry bar out. A little bit on each side, just kind of let it pull itself over. And it is, it's sliding down. So you can see right there on the lip, that little bit of a taper, just kind of let it push itself apart, kind of back to its original position. Um, and I am going to need that, that pry bar to actually torque these. I'll just torque them to 200, but that one just sat nice and flat. Oops. Push itself right into place and with those welds where the cracks used to be after he pushed it back together with the vise, knowing how well it lines up. Well, that actually, oh yeah, this, I can do it just with the plastic fins. I'll get these torqued up. Cool. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. 
it's going to be plenty strong. Like I said, if I just left it alone and hooked and bolted all this together, it probably would have been fine. But knowing that our our dude that knows his stuff had his hands on it and was able to, to get this together. And just looking at the weld, I'm sure he was, he was probably cussing up and down. But when he sees that beer money, hopefully he'll be okay with it. <laughs> Somebody's car alarm is going off. And then I heard a second one go off, so they grabbed the wrong keys and pushed the panic button instead of the unlock button to shut it off. So we'll see how long it takes them to find their other keys. It's a guy across the street. He's a giant idiot. So the neighbor, Dave, right? Awesome Dave, the one that does karate. <laughs> they have a berm in front of their house, right? And they were like, oh, we're going to put this berm in and then do some other landscaping. And this guy across the street was like, oh, yeah, like, I do landscaping. Oop, they, they did their other alarm. Now they're all off. Wait, they did the alarm twice. Yeah, okay, they're stupid. Yeah, and he told me, like, yeah, if he ever, he ever comes over here, John, and tells you that he can help you with some stuff, he's like, just stay, just stay, no, stay away. It was a disaster. Like, they screwed his yard up really bad. He messed up a whole bunch of other stuff and then still wanted to get paid, and they were overpriced. Like, it's just a horrible list of how dumb they are. I remember calling him one day, too, because there were headlights right just across the road like off in the woods it's still his property i was like that's kind of odd that really i'm just recording again i mean that's stupid <laughs> but uh, i was like hey dave i was like what's with this car just sitting right here by the road with its headlights on he's like oh he does that he goes out there with his car and cuts firewood and seriously the dude like he sells firewood at the road and it's not a bad price i think he's charging 60 bucks for a face cord so it's like, eh, that's tempting. But at the same time, I don't want to risk interacting with him um, and having him see fresh meat. Like, oh, here's a new neighbor. Maybe I'll try to get chummy and screw his yard up for money. But either way, yeah, he goes out there with his car and cuts firewood. But then the firewood's not there when he leaves. So I think he puts it in the trunk of his car. It's like, what? How come you don't? Like, he has a truck. I've seen it. <laughs> so I don't know. You just, there's a little out of their mind, right? Anyway, back to this. So it specifically tells you not to do what I just did and put the magnet right where it's at. So we're going to loosen these up and try to pull this up. But it says pull the magnet away. Um, put this as high up as it'll go and snug these down. And then you're supposed to put a 0.3 millimeter. So... 0, 1, 2 inch feeler gauge, which we have. It says flat, specifies flat, even though it's a curved surface, between the magnet and ignition module. And then you loosen the screws and let it and suck itself together. Then you tighten them down from 35 to 55 inch pounds. Well, we're given a range, and this is America, so we're gonna do 55 inch pound because more, more is better all the time. <laughs> so per the instructions, we have it all the way up. You get the magnet in there lined up and it did say use a flat fuel gauge so we got 0.12 yeah, it's pretty tight right the retorque wrench already set up now we need to loosen these and let the magnet pull them together you can hear it kind of hit that I mean, that's, that's, it does, it touches that side. Hmm. So I'm looking at this one that's not installed. It looks like that mag, like the pickup kind of follows the curve of the legs. There's that gap in the magnet. So I worry about, if I'm sticking this in the center, right? It's kind of doing what it needs to do, but maybe not so much. So new idea. This is what we're going to go with. Um, I don't think it's going to run funny from it. Um, but I also don't know if it's their intention. So if I get this centered perfectly, and then we have these nice long gauges, so why not put them along the curve and then just do it like, I think that's going to be fine, right? Because they don't want stuff to rub. This will guarantee nothing rubs. Um, it makes sense to me, right? Good, right? And then pull that thing out it's nice and close but nothing touches I think that's a meal ticket get yourself some nice long feeler gauges that can wrap around that 
and you make sure everything everything comes out nice. So manual, I'm plugged into the charger so it won't go all the way over. It says install intake manifold with gaskets or o-rings and then in parentheses plastic manifold. So o-rings right same color same shape of everything so these little gaskets that have the stick-ons those are for the metal manifolds and uh these gaskets the o-rings are for the plastic so these are the only two we need of the three options that are in there um yeah so get that intake on so next step these were zip tied up in place right i think this this went somewhere with the carb. We got a strap. So, did that have, did one of these hold it on? Hmm. This is the part where I go back and look at old video and figure out where all this stuff went because we don't want it rubbing on things and we don't want to tie it up until we know where it actually goes. Otherwise it's gonna be a big pain in the dingus. Okay, this is pretty close to the picture. Nothing's, you know, touchable. This will plug into something. Uh, probably do with a starter, for all I know. I think this might actually go down further, but either way, we're clear. Wires that were pinched by the zip ties are now pinched by new zip ties. So, I think we're in good shape. We'll pick another, another step and move on. So wiring looks good and all matches uh, what it did in the, in the uh, pictures that I had, well, video that I had from removing everything. Now, next step in the manual is to put this bat, this whole shield on, right? Your, your airflow stuff for the fan. Um, but we're getting to that point where I know that that can be separated when the valve covers are on from when we took it apart. So... Uh, Definitely, we're going to put the new gaskets in the valve covers with RTV because we already know that we snapped bolts in yeah this corner on the exhaust side. So exhaust side bolt on both sides is gone. We're not using it. We've only got six. So we definitely, from at least this corner across the bottom, one RTV. We're going to RTV to assist our gasket all the way around. Um, I just know from previous mowings that it will leak oil if I don't do that just because we don't have all of the all of the bolts and we're not gonna fuck with uh, an aluminum block hmm I think this will work right we get this in there with a nice clamp on it and it'll end up uh, somewhere in this position when it hooks up to its vacuum line uh, I don't know what half this shit attaches to but it goes there Put the plugs in hand tight so I can still crank it like they're not sealed nice, right? But it keeps those out of the way. I think this is how all this went. I hope. <laughs> like things are getting a little bit wild, so I'm super tired again. And I don't know if this was supposed to go in one of these. Like it is a lifting point for the, the motor, right? If you were a big baby and you had to use... Uh, a lift instead of just your arms to pick up a little tiny v-twin um so we'll have to look at the video and see where this ended up it does it does line up with with these guys i think it went on this side so we can pull those out and put it back in just so that it exists but really it's it's not a necessity we'll see it goes somewhere and there's probably something diagonal from it that has a hook too so you can just lift the whole whole thing up and down but <clears throat> geez this is enough for tonight i'm tired of it we'll we'll deal with it tomorrow i got an entire day and the one priority of the day will be get this complete get it in the chassis and mow the damn lawn okay back at it it's uh it's almost noon kind of late start but that's okay um i had to pull this back off to route the the switch wire through so these are sticking up where they should be this is where it should be this is where it should be our plug wires are hanging out they're looking pretty good this will probably holds it on there and then they specify 
which bolts go where because I forgot, so it's kind of nice. They say M6 screws go into back of cylinders, short M5 screws go into lower holes closest to blower housing. Um, I thought this is the blower housing. So, uh, I don't know. They got a bunch of different lengths, but I don't see... These look like sixes, but that's too big for those holes. Those will use M5s. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I know this goes here, so these will need to be a little bit longer than the other side, possibly, maybe. So we'll just start slapping them in to make sure they don't hit anything. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Nothing touches. I got the screen back on the front. Um, we'll make sure we get the skirt around the foot area of the mower because that's like a pre-filter to this, right? So that might have been part of our problem is I didn't run that last year at all. Uh, so get this thing whipped around, get the other side built up, and we need to clean the carb because it's disgusting, right? It's probably okay on the inside, but if we're going to clean the outside, you know, get this thing flushed off, we're going to go ahead and split it open anyway and just make sure there's no huge chunks of stuff in there uh, before we install it, blow the passages out, all that good stuff. We've got the pulleys on. I almost did it backwards, right? So I went back and looked at my own video, which is why these are super useful. And that collar goes on first, then our stack of plates for the pulleys. Um, I wanted to put the governor on. The procedure for it requires the carb to be on. So when you tighten this down, they want you to push it to wide open throttle and then turn the shaft the other way with a pin and then tighten it up. So it seems like a three-arm job, but we'll figure it out. We need to get that carb cleaned up and on top of there. Here's a tip. Don't Put your carb in before putting this arm on. It's super pain in the butt. Um, so it sits in this, it's going to be in this position when it's on the thing. And you just, you really can't get that in there. So don't, don't be me. Make sure you can get this thing up in the air and um, feed that through properly before you set it down and torque it. 55 to 65 inch pounds on those bolts. Okay, so for the governor setup, it says to put the throttle, push the arm towards the throttle as far as it'll go, because that's wide open. Uh, fortunately, it's sprung to wide open. So I guess if you didn't have the governor hooked up, this thing would be just full bore all the time. It would never cut back and regulate itself. Um, and then, yeah, so we don't have to hold that. We don't need a bunch of arms. And it tells you to put a nail in here and rotate it. So there's not a lot of movement, right? There's not a lot of space um, that you have to worry about when it wants it counterclockwise, so this way as far as it'll go, and then 60 inch pounds on that bolt. Just going to put the plate up on the top of the carb, took these bolts out, I had them in there so I'd know where they go, and I dropped it in this hole. <laughs> so, but I can see it. Uh, yeah. It's down in there, I think, because there's magnets on that flywheel. It's probably stuck to a magnet. I have a little claw tool that might be able to get that out. We did it. There it is. <laughs> that's pretty lucky. I mean, look at how they gripped that, too. Like, holy cow, I would have sucked to have to pull that whole front shield off to try to find this thing. All right, let's be a little more careful this time. Looks like of things that are on, because I was looking at, like, here, where it's shinier, and I was like, something goes against that somewhere. And, like, where's all the throttle hiccups, right? And I left the starter wired up out here. I left the throttle and choke controls out here. So I'll have to take that top plate probably back off to hook those up. Um, but with the front clip off and the exhaust off, everything that I need to reach is easy to get to. So I think it's time we bring it out here and, and set it in place. Um, we'll do the rest of the work out here. Now, I do need an oil filter. I threw this filter away because I'm dumb. I think, yeah. Oh, did I? I'm pretty sure I did, but it's just a screw on. And these are all filters for cars I don't own anymore. So if one of these is the right size, we'll use it. It looks promising. Mostly concerned about where the gasket seats um, and the thread size. So we'll go through our filters. Um, maybe we'll grab a chart and see what this is supposed to have and if any of these are actually compatible. Cross-reference it. So. Right here, get a nice Bosch filter for a Subaru. Mm, that'd be nice. Right there on the cross reference list, Car Quest 85348. And what do we got? An 85348. So we had at least one, probably have a bunch. There's another one, probably all these tall ones. 85348. I got a ton of one more oil filters. Um, this probably went to. 
in that era I had a Forerunner, I had a CBR 929, I had probably had some kind of Volkswagen hanging around. Um, but as far as you spin on, yeah, this might be the same filter for a forerunner. That might be fun to look up later, but we don't care now. All we care about is the threads match and our holes are in the right spot and the gas goes past them. So get some oil in here and get it soaking uh, before we put it on. Then we'll have to put oil in the engine, but we'll do that after we carry it over. So it's always, always something, right? There's on the side doing the last bolt and I kept thinking to myself like I thought a ground I thought there was a big ground out here somewhere and then as I'm wrenching on it this pops up right so here's my ground yay so this guy it went on one of these and it looks like it went on that one because it's got wear marks underneath it but this one's super hard to get to so we're gonna put it on that one it just doesn't matter it's getting kind of loud out here. Uh, neighbor Brian's out for a mow. He takes a lot better care of his yard than I do. So, so far, you know, the grass is pretty long. It's going to be a, a wild one, a wild first cut for a fresh motor. Uh, we're slow, we're putting oil in, checking it, letting it drain all the way, that kind of thing. Um, got our pulleys on, motor's bolted down, starter's on, wiring's hooked up, that hose is hooked up, fuel's hooked up. We had to take that plate off to get our choke thingy in place. Um, this stuff all gets sandwiched, right? So the bracket and then the, the plate that holds on the governor stuff. I think that's the hole we were in. I'll double check before I put any covers over it. But really we're looking at uh, get the shaft on, get the exhaust on. Things are coming together pretty quick. Um, it does show, so this one doesn't have a color to it, right? And there's four holes. Now, uh, oh, but with the grass length, yeah. So Brian's a three to one. This is the third time he's mowed since uh, Cubby went down. And neighbor Dave just mowed today for the second time since Cubby went down, so you know, a little catching up to do. But what this shows is two governor types, right? So we only have four holes, so it's an eight millimeter. Um, eight millimeter governor lever hole position for CH18. Next page, so remember hole C, that's hole two. Next page, clear, hole two, 2900 RPM watt. So they said not to let this engine go over um, with no load, not to go over 3750. So I think it's capable a lot more. <laughs> Without a proper spring, I don't think we're, we're allowed, like it's not gonna work right to go higher. Um, so yeah, we'll put it in that, in hole two, which was C, I don't know why they didn't just number it, but that's where it is. I think that's where it was before. We'll just leave it all the same. I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, here's another funny one. Uh, I don't want wind noise from the fan. There we go. I went to put this bracket on and I was like, huh, I was like, I only have three bolts, but I only really need two. What the hell's that other one for? Well, this one, I screwed it all the way in, tighten it down. That's probably, that's where the ground actually went. <laughs> it, didn't, it does the same thing, so we're going to leave it where it's at, but we'll just tighten this up so we don't lose it and uh, move on. Next time the engine's out, um, in a week and a half when it explodes, we'll move the ground. Went ahead and aired this tire up, just kind of look at it, and we got water you know coming through the sidewall i think it's slime actually it's like this thing could explode at any minute it makes me kind of nervous even inflating it so we'll probably cut the, we'll cut on it today because when i'm on the mower it won't hurt me any but yeah needs needs a tire if we're getting one we might as well get two so yeah it sucks it's more money but let's get it up and running make sure it's going to serve us for many more years and then it'll be worth putting that cash into tires I'm gonna, since you, know, you buy this can, you have it for life because you really never need that much of it. So we're gonna go ahead and use copper spray, get the gaskets in place, grab the muffler, get it in place, and then it'll technically be ready to start. Uh, sands a battery and some other covers. So I think it's, um, you go through stages, right? And in my younger years, I would do what I'm gonna do today is put everything together. So when it starts up, I can just use it. Um, and then after making mistakes enough to know that well it's just more you have to take apart if you screwed up right went through that phase um, where i would check everything as i went and now i'm back i'm older right? and it's one of those where if this mower doesn't start today we're not taking it back apart we're gonna put it somewhere and hide from it for a while out of anger and hate okay so brian's out weedy and it's a little loud but there's the only bag of bolts left right always happy about that when you 
we know all the, these are all the body panel bolts and that's all we have left to put on so we don't have spare things laying around that, that should be inside the motor holding things together. So get those on and uh, get a clip of first fire. This is it. We're all the way back together. Um, there's a couple things that are going to need to happen. One, fuel pump's going to need to fill that carb, right? So that might take a while. Hopefully that gives us enough time to build up oil pressure. This does have a system. Light will come on if it doesn't see pressure in that sensor that was on top of the motor. So I think, uh, yeah, we just do full throttle, maybe half choked. It's a hot day out. It probably doesn't need it, but just because. Yeah, we'll give it a little, little bit of choke. That's, that's exciting. Had a little pop when I stopped it there, but you know, it's a lawnmower, right? I didn't actually take the part, carb apart and clean it, so maybe it's running a little goofy, but we're gonna get out there and get the lawn cut. But geez, oh, Pete's, it's gross out. Um, really humid. I feel disgusting. Felt good to get out there moving. This thing goes like 12, 10 or 12 miles an hour, so temperature's not too bad once you're on the mower. Um, and go in there but that rear wheel lost all of its air just while we were working so i think what i'll have to do is just do like a section at a time right i'll do this little part over here i'll top off the tire i'll do the back top off the tire do the front top off the tire uh, and then i'll leave it parked up here because i'm going to go buy tires um, the next time i drive a four-wheeled vehicle into town actually no i got straps i could pick up tires on the bike so well, we'll get those as soon as possible, uh, as long as today's mow goes smoothly. But yeah, feel good about it. Started right up, did everything it's supposed to do, didn't make funny sounds. Um, good. So I'm going to, oddly enough, shower, and then I'm going to come outside and mow the lawn. <laughs> 